Grimgar Fantasy of Ash is an isekai and, in my opinion, it's one of the better ones. It fills you with emotion and it takes you on a journey with a plethora of different characters through the good, the bad, and the boring. I've seen a lot of anime in my life and no show really has cemented itself in my brain like this one has. Something about starting over in a new world excites me. Whether it be struggling with my own insecurities or me wanting to try something new, this show is meant to bring the best out of you. This story is set in a world away from Earth known as Grimgar. It is a whole other world that people are transported to for unexplained reasons. Our story starts with a main hero, Haruhiro, waking up inside a big monolith with no memory of who he is or how he got there. They all travel to Ortana where they run into the gender fluid Brittany at the Red Moon. Essentially, they're told to fight to survive. Everyone decides to become a volunteer and they split up into teams. The biggest, broadest, and most handsome man, besides for Brittany, named Renji, takes command and gets the four of the strongest people to be on his team. Haru and the rest of the main cast, they're the leftovers. This anime was decent. Like I said, this is one of my favorite shows, even though I gave it a 5 out of 10. Even though it had a great impact on me, I can still see the flaws in the show. They still have the main anime tropes that you see. Ranta's a loud mouth, always talking shit. You know, they got the thirst trap. And they over sexualize the girls to an extreme amount for not being an actual anime. Just like the rating I gave the show, the music also is a 5 out of 10. The opening and ending though are certified slappers, however the music choice for the anime itself fell off. They didn't feel like they fit the theme of the show. Take the first fight scene for example, the fast paced music is good, it builds the right amount of speed for the fight and the music is heavy to show the weight of the situation, but the heavy rock music with electric guitars doesn't fit into the world with no technology. The sad music was played at right times to try to bring out the emotion of the scene but it really just felt off like it wasn't placed correctly. I would be remiss if I didn't mention all the camera angles they had in the show. Like, you have over 20 shots of Yume's dump truck. When you add this in the middle of a fight, it really takes you away from the actual story itself. And I'm not into edgy shows, and the fact that the rest of the show is completely realistic yet, you may find yourself downward dog and a blow on a fire just takes me out of it. Especially when the scene is important not to the story, but to the characters and how life really is when they're traveling. Let's say Claymore for example, they had these sexy ass women doing badass things without them being overly sexualized, and they still get the character development that they deserve. So whenever you have the bad, the good is always right around the corner, and this show just really captivates you with its world. The water painted backgrounds with the complimenting colors beast life into this grim world. To do it in such a way that allows the background not to look like a child's finger painting is remarkable. This shit is fucking ray traced in 2016. You can feel how this world is massive and it can really just stretch on forever. The same goes with the buildings. Each area they frequent has its own distinct textures and patterns to them with these different shades of whites, greens, and yellows that no one place actually looks the same. And the same can be said for the nature, like the nature in the show is top tier. The background complements these characters in a way that doesn't distract you from the main story itself. The watercolor makes it feel like the environment is alive, like there's this constant motion, like time will never stop. You see, this show is always about pushing forward. Yeah, I know there's a lot of other shows that do the exact same thing, but they're not Grimgar and they don't do it the way Grimgar does. See, Grimgar gives you a fantasy world that's based in reality. These characters are human. They aren't pulling shit out of their asses in tight situations and the constant fear of death is lingering around every corner. The whole main cast has these lingering scars from another world. They might not know what it is, but it follows them, and you can see it by the way they speak and the actions that they take. We can look at Monoto for example. Even though he was in the show just for a short little while, there's this constant lingering that something isn't right with this guy, that his true intentions are constantly being hidden. He avoids direct questions and he pivots to talk about other things. You know, whatever may be on the outside doesn't always represent someone's true feelings. And it's not just the humans in this show either, the goblins. The goblins show that they're alive too, just like you and me. They mess with each other, they play cars, they laugh, they joke, and most importantly, they're scared to die. This innate emotion that all you want to do is live no matter what is spread across every living creature in this show. Like, look at this dude. This dude is scared shitless. After being stabbed and cut multiple times, you can see the fear in his eyes that it's over and there's nothing he can do about it. And our squad knows that. Ranta doesn't even know what to do with himself and he cries. Haru can't even drop his dagger and... Or you can't even watch. We see how they react after this and we see the most human part of the entire show. Them doing nothing. Eating, shopping, walking around, trying to cope with the reality that's set before them. They need to relax and realize that whether or not goblins are good or bad, they need to survive and whatever happens next is unknown to everyone. See, this story immediately gets a hold of your balls by hitting you with the idea of the unknown. What is this place? How did I get here? Why am I here? And most importantly, who am I? If I said that the unknown was the driving force of the show, I'd be wrong. This is just the initial taste of what is to come, but if I said I wasn't hooked with just these ideas alone, I'd be lying. The unknown brings a slew of different emotions, angry, happy, sad, relaxed, anxious, and most importantly depressed. Think of the unknown like a tunnel. You enter into a tunnel and it's pitch black. You don't know what's inside, it could be empty or it could be filled with creatures that are trying to kill you. But you know, no matter what, you had to walk through this tunnel to make it to the other side. At that moment, how would you feel? 
That is what Grimgar brings to his viewers, this feeling that you get to connect with these characters of not knowing anything. Yet, we try our best with what we have that hopefully one day we'll see the light at the end of the tunnel. After Monoto dies and Haru is thrust in his leadership role, you can get this feeling that he has never been a leader before. He doesn't know how to control other people. He doesn't know how to strategize to prevent the least amount of casualties. He tries his best, but he keeps failing day after day. He shown the two girls out of the group and they just felt alone. And at the same time, he went behind their backs and recruited Mary. He isn't trying to rally everyone together and just lets all of them wallow on their own. They were slowly falling apart right before his eyes and he didn't know what to do except hold his emotions inside. This feeling of not knowing what to do was harder for him than it was getting acquainted with this new world. And the biggest turning point for him was when Yume confronted him about the death of Monoto. She breaks and finally so does Haru. Just like the title says, crying doesn't mean you're weak and enduring doesn't mean you're strong. And Haru, no matter what was ahead of them, he picked up his foot and took another step forward. He pivoted. He changed. We get to see him and these other characters grow. We get to understand about Mary and why she was being such a cold bitch for so long. No matter what the unknown holds, you always have to push forward. You gotta learn from your mistakes and just take another step. This show is about taking the first step into new territory no matter how scary it might be. I think what really brings the show together at the end is the realistic aspect of the squad just trying to make money and how they interact with Ortana. Watching Mogozo cook or carve wood, Monoto feeding birds, Rana eating, or Mary relaxing reading a book. All of these things are ways that we relax, ways that we cope and as viewers we can connect with them. When Monoto dies, that feeling of loneliness that they get is reminiscent to losing someone close to you. They can't think straight, they don't get along and nothing's going right. Coupling that with the fact that they're weak and everyone is leagues ahead of them does not stop them from trying and trying and trying. You can feel them. You point to sections of your life and you think, yeah, I've been there before, and you keep watching to see how these characters are going to handle this situation. The show teaches us that you can try something new no matter what the outcome is. It's all about taking the first step. For some, it might come natural and you pick it up right away, and for others, it might be a slow burn. You might fail 10, 20, 30 times before you start making any progress, and that's okay. At the end of the day, it's all about perseverance. So fast forward to the end of the season, we see them take on Despot. This is the biggest obstacle. This is the biggest obstacle that they had to face at this point. When I was watching this, I looked at it as a milestone they need to overcome. All they fought were goblins, and they were getting bodied by these little bastards. And then they see this unmovable pillar. When I look at it, I see the stopping point. Not in terms of the show, but in terms of you and these characters. When that big obstacle gets in your way and you can't overcome it on your first attempt. People tend to quit. They stop trying because they feel stagnated like they can't grow anymore. When in reality, it's not like that. It's about finding a way to overcome it even if you have to try and try again. No matter how many goblins you have to kill, at some point you will be strong enough to take down Despot. Even with all the show's flaws and the overall critique of a lot of people, why do I think it's as good as it is? And to answer that short, it changed me. It came out when I was going into college, a new state, new people, a new environment, and I was taking the first step for the rest of my life. If y'all are anything like me, as a kid, you spec all your stats into one thing. Then you get a reality check and realize you shouldn't do an only dex build when there are mages out there who can 360 no scope you off the top rope. This nostalgia feeling I get when I go back and watch it is something different. It reminds me of what my life was like 4 years ago and those emotions immediately come flooding back. It's like starting up a PS2 for the first time in years and playing Sly Cooper or Jack and Daxter. It brings you back to a simpler time when all you cared about was not getting belted by your parents and trying not to get a boner in gym class. That feeling is what Grimgar gives me. A big old boner in gym class. I connected with these characters being thrust into an unknown environment where they didn't know anyone. They didn't know the land and all they had was themselves. What they did know is that they had to get stronger. They had to adapt to their new lives in order to survive. I get chills when I think about these characters at their worst and how they dealt with their emotions because yeah, that shit's relatable. I felt them bottle up their emotions where they can't sleep at night and their minds are filled with uncertainty. They are human. That one word is often missed in this genre. These characters are grounded in reality which makes this show so special. So I'm going to leave you with this. If you haven't seen this anime, give it a watch. It won't be for everyone. Some will hate it and some will love it. Honestly, I don't give a shit. But what I do care about is that you learn something from this video. That everything that's happened to you or everything that you've done in your life will always be a part of you and what makes you, you. This doesn't mean you cannot change who you are. This video was about trying something new. Not just trying something new and throwing it away, but sticking with it in the face of adversity. It's about getting outside of your comfort zone to experience the unknown. It's easy to get complacent and continue your mundane life, but what are you accomplishing if you're not really happy? 